Hello everyone. Welcome to all. Your Professor Sumer Ali. We are learning the subject of circuit theory. Today we will see here the chapter of your the frequency selective network. So enjoy this online learning. So we will see here what is the importance of your the frequency selective networks. Okay, so we know very well in the frequency selective network. If you are thinking about the frequency, definitely the signal should be like that so that we can see the what is the uh, what again how the same signal will be passed, whether the signal is weak, whether the signal is uh, uh, strong as uh, strength out, and uh, that is possible with the help of the uh, topic that is nothing but the filters. And that we know very well the filters are the circuitry which are passing the signals within the band of the frequency and that also rejecting and the blocking the uh, rest of the signals and the frequency outside the band on this uh, property is nothing but the uh, filters property and that all over is nothing but where the we are selecting the frequency by using the filters so we we need to uh, study about the filters so filters are nothing but capable of passing the signals within the band of the frequency that have the property or the function of your the rejecting as well as the blocking the signals of your the frequency outside the band okay even the this uh, type of the filters are used or you can say by using this uh, Filters the frequency can be selected easily with the help of the various types that is nothing but you are the active and the passive filters So what is mean by active the if we are going to prefer employing the transistor and the op -amp and along with your the uh, capacitor and the registers are nothing but the active filters whereas the passive is nothing but by using the component of your the RLC uh, if you are going to build the, the circuit is nothing but the passive filters so these two are active as well as the passive filters are used while you are going to select the frequencies which are most widely useful and applicable for the wide range of the applications such as entertain, entertainment, the televisions, the medical application and many more in the electronic circuitry. In this way we can say if there are various uh, types of your the, uh, filters that is nothing but your the uh, two types of most widely or the broadly classification is nothing but you are the uh, analog filters as well as the digital filters so in the analog or you can say the digital filter we, that is subdivided into uh, the four category that is nothing but the low pass filters the high pass filters the band pass filter and the band stop filters so in the ideal case we can say here the how the low pass filter can be seen how the high pass filter how the band stop and the band pass if you are going to observe the ideal cases if you are going to observe the frequency ranges that is uh, uh, angular frequency or the frequency in the normal as well as the cutoff frequency ranges so in this way you can observe how the uh, the range of the frequency can be passed how the range of the frequency can be can be stopped in the low pass the lower range of the frequency can be passed but the other range will be the stop and in the high pass the starting uh, lower range will be st stop and the particular frequency will be the pass here the particular is will be the pass in the two sided yeah, and before the cutoff and the after that is the before initial and the after that it will be the pass and particular will be the stop here will be particular will be the pass so likewise we can find easily particular ranges so if you, even we know very well there are a broadly classified in the active and the passive filters in the previous slides also we have seen how the um, uh, the active filter will be worked out by using the transistor and the op amps how the passive filter will be worked that is by using the RLRC and the RLC circuitry so in this way there are various advantages of your the active filters over the passive that is nothing but to provide the gain the required gain that is possible no attenuation in the case of the passive filters even the no loading problems because of the high input uh, resistances and the low output uh, resistances of your the op amps so in this way the active filters are the cost effective uh, for the wide variety of your the if you are going to use the op amp so the active filters 
the uh, pass band is the ranges frequency that are allowed to the pass the um, you can say the signal is the critical frequency fc is nothing but the critical frequency and uh, that you can observe here the curve and the graph that is the gain versus the cutoff frequency so in this way the this band uh, the range of the frequency is um, can be calculated with the help of this bandwidth okay and that particular will be the pass uh, few amount of that frequency will be pass band and the other will be the response of the single pole rc if you are going to connect your the register and the capacity in that filter so how we can get the 3 db that is nothing but if you are taking up to the 3 db or plus or minus 3 db you, you need to think about the 70.7 percent will be there so in this way the stop band is the range of the frequency that have the most recognition and the transition region will be there this is nothing but the transition region where the the graph will be changed from the uh, active region to the other region here the active filters have the drawback are realized by using the register capacitor uh, devices that will be integrated so here the, that will be replaced by the inductor using the op-amp so advantages of your the active with the rc filters are included reducing the size and the weight increasing the reliability and improving the performance the simple design circuitry will be there and the large quantity will be there and the cost of your the rc will be less as compared to other things so in this way there are various advantages of the active filter over the passive filter if you are going to use the R inductor capacitor and the register value so no signal attenuation will be there no loading problem will be there and easy to adjust over the wider range of the frequency that is possible if with the help of the, the active filter so in this way the limited bandwidth of your the active devices are there this is the one of the disadvantages of your the active filters that is nothing but you are the up to the 500 mega uh, hertz of the frequency is used even the requires the power supply even increasing the sensitivity of the variation in the circuit parameters so these are the few lacunas are found in the active filters so passive filters are using the RLCs that is a, a register inductor and the capacitors also to minimize the distortion in the filter characteristics we need to um, use the inductor with a high quality of the factors so in this way the um, particularly the non ideal case and the bulky and the expensive these are the uh, drawback practically if you are going to use the inductor you can find uh, such a, um, issues in the inductor so we, we know very well there are the four types of the word the filters low pass filters high pass band pass and band stop filters uh, so how they can be allowed the range of the frequency from the zero hertz to the particular so uh, uh, if you are talking about the digitally so zero to one otherwise uh, you can find here will be the pass band and other range of the frequency will be the stop so zero to up to the high frequency you can that will be passed so the gain you can find in terms of the voltage will be v0 by vi and uh, the gain versus the frequency uh, the graph is shown here uh, other graph is the gain versus the frequency how the ranges of the cutoff frequencies are passing this is the ideal case and this one is the practical case Otherwise, for the low pass uh, uh, filter how the um, uh, register and the capacitor can be connect you can observe the, the what you can say the curve you can observe the circuitry you can observe the graph between the gain and the frequency even for the uh, what you can say uh, how much amount of uh, will be with the pass band that also you can observe easily what is the transition region how the stop band will be happen how the critical frequency all these things you can observe in this slide in this way we can find the band of the frequency that is nothing but the cutoff frequency the ranges of the frequency and we know very well for the resonance circuitry that r should be equals to reactances so here if you are uh, talking about the rc filters uh, or the rc network or the circuitry so definitely r will be equals to x so in this way the critical frequency fc is equal to 1 by 2 pi rc so how we can find the first order second order and the third order or you can say the how the transfer function can be find that is possible with the help of h is the representation of your the transfer function and if you are, you are talking about the frequency and the angular frequency how we can find that you can observe here easily so cutoff frequency or the critical frequency you can say so uh, either you may um, uh, represent uh, this omega or you can say the f f, f is equal f is equal to fc is equal to f0 that will be 1 by cr like this you can simplify the numerical that is the fct divided by zero critical frequency or the at a resonant frequency so in this way you can find the, the transfer function 
in this way the hypers filter how the uh, you can stop the un, uh, other unnecessary uh, signals or range of the frequency and other how you can pass that is mentioned here how the all allows the frequency of above the critical frequencies that is nothing but the lower range of the frequency because it's a lower to the higher so in this way you can find how the response uh, the, the vice versa case from the low pass filter see here the uh, the response of your the single pole rc uh, filters how we are getting this response curve the gain versus the critical frequency this is the actual response and this is the ideal case response so in this way you can observe easily the curve the circuitry of your the rc and the gain versus the frequency ideal case you can observe easily uh, the difference between the low pass and the high pass uh, how the rc can be connected or how the cr will be connected which is the blocking term in this way we can block the unnecessary and we can stop the range of the frequency now and how we can pass the other frequencies that you can observe easily so in this way how we can find the um, uh, high pass filter so fc will be the 1 by 2 pi of rc so band pass uh, the particular range of the frequency will be passed that is nothing but the pass band so from the lower to the higher initial to the final so this particular range of the frequency can be passed and this from which we can get the ideal case is nothing but 0 0.707 or the 70.7 percent and here will be normalized voltage and so voltage uh, this is the car the zero um, voltage versus the frequency curves and then this is the critical frequency or the cutoff frequency which is ranging in between the uh, the f1 and f2 initial and the final lower and the higher frequency range in this way we can observe easily the actual and the ideal response of your other band pass filter band stop particular amount of uh, the frequency will be stopped that is the uh, range from the lower to the higher for initial to the final and other rest of the thing will be passed and the particular range of the frequency will be stopped so see here how the, this uh, band stop is the vice versa case of your the band pass filter like your the low pass is different from the high pass so in this way we can find the all the parameters I, that is the initial to final frequency ranges the band widths the quality factors so see here the difference how they can be the f1 and f2 how they can be passed how we can uh, uh, get the sum, uh, summation in the amplifier and how this particular range of the frequency can be stopped and likewise you can observe all these things in this way this uh, for so all these things so we can all the frequencies type uh, what you can say filter type that is a low pass band pass bar, stop band and the uh, high pass filters so frequency response is important so that is nothing but the filter response characteristics we can, we need to observe the ba uh, pass band we need to observe the attenuation we need to uh, so which type of a uh, method we are we are going to use that is nothing but the butterworth that is the basal and the uh, what we can say uh, chi shape met methods that is nothing but we are interested in the voltage gain with, re with respect to the so all this uh, the filter response characteristics is too important by adopting the methods either the butterworth the, the chasers and the other bases uh, and each every methods gives gives the other response of your the filters by using that particular frequency you can uh, able to observe the amplitude you can observe the dbs you can observe the gains and you can observe the roll off rates you can observe the overshoots you can observe the linearity and non linear the ideal and the practical cases so this is the characteristics impedance or you can say the resonance how resonance can be happen how the impedance versus the frequency you can observe this is the if the x is greater than xl how the capacity the component will work how the inductive if xl is greater than xc in this way at which particular thing the resonance can be happen that is nothing but z is equals to r and how the xl will be equals to xc so in this way how we can plot the board plot uh, so which is too important to observe the frequency response characteristics of your the amplifier and this uh, the magnitude and the phase of the transfer uh, function can be possible observed in the form of your the dv versus the frequency so in this way we are uh, we can also write in the, in terms of the decibel and we can find the two level power that is uh, the, in the form of your the bell that is b b is equals to log 10 and the p2 by p1 is nothing but the output power divided by the input power and that also you can measure it in the uh, decibel that is the one bell is equal to 10 decibel so in this way db is equal to 10 log 10 of p2 divided by p1 likewise you can find the rest of the voltage, uh, voltage as well as the current ratio 
see here the difference between the decibel and the uh, the parameters so the power again in the dB and the voltage gain in the uh, dB so see here the difference of your the op amps of P in and the P out V in and the V out how the AP is nothing but the power gain in the dB 10 log 10 of uh, your the output power to the input power similar to the uh, voltage gain in the dB 20 log 10 of your the output the voltage into the input voltage likewise the 0 dB is you can observe on uh, 3 dB and the plus 3 dB both you can observe in the voltage as well as the power gain so here the even uh, you can observe the transfer characteristics in terms of the uh, poles and the zeros and uh, how they can placed how we can find the, uh, the mathematical expression related to the poles and the zero that is possible so in this way the transfer function uh, that is uh, represent at the edge of your the j omega so uh, the input voltage to the output voltage uh, you can observe easily with the help of input port and the output port the transfer function of that uh, representation of h into j omega so h into j omega that is in the imaginary imaginary part that is a real and imaginary part will be there we are interested in the imaginary so output to the input of imaginary so you can find easily the mod of h that is nothing but the representation of magnitude root of real as well as the imaginary part of your the h that is a transfer function so in this way the real and the machine part you can find easily so likewise the frequency transfer uh, function of your the filter can be observed easily with the help of the all the type of the filters low pass filters high pass filters band pass filters band stop filters and all the types of that is possible with the help of observing the frequency transfer as well as the transfer function so h uh, j omega is a representation of your the frequency transfer or the transfer functions so, so if it equals to one then the normal frequency less than the critical frequency here the greater than then the, that will be the zero likewise in each so these two are the vice versa similar to these two are the vice versa how the frequency can be lying between the low to the high frequency ranges or initial to the um, final so likewise these two you can vice versa and these two are the vice versa like this you can find easily so in this way we have studied about the filters all types of the filter the frequency responses the ideal and the practical uh, responses uh, we have seen how the resonance occurs how the uh, cutoff and the critical frequency we can find how the bandwidth we can find all these things we have uh, seen in the introductory part of your the filters which is required which is essential to know while you are going to select the frequency so that's why we are learning the sub chapter of your the frequency selective network in the circuit theory thank you so much